This is part two of the mailbag. I have to assume you did not follow the safety rules of part one. So I cannot do anything else than to start. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Next one. Just some additional jumper wires. Next one. Backup parking sensor. Now, my car does not need such a backup sensor because it has already one built in. And I think most of the newer cars have one built in, but they are special. Also here, I bought this one because a viewer asked me to buy one. These should not be normal ultrasonic sensors. They should be radar sensors. So let's check. You hear, I have nothing to say because I do not understand how it works. This seems to be the antenna. It says here sensor antenna, control module and alarm beeper. So this one is not the sensor, this is just the beeper, the big one. This is the control unit and this seems to be the antenna. Now the antenna is really strange. It's just a strip of aluminium foil and, <laughs> and uh, a connector attached to it somehow. Not really professional. And it's quite a long strip here, so I assume this has to be mounted across the overall bumper here or inside the bumper probably, because uh, if it's radar, it is also working through some material. But I'm really not sure if this works. So I have to test. There are instructions in English. The English is okay. And we have it here in, I think in, uh, in Spanish even. But not clear how to Mounted. I, I assume now that these two should be connected because they fit and this one fits here. That's okay. And this one is the beeper and this one is hopefully plus 12 volt and ground. Because it is for a car, I assume it's 12 volt. So let's check it out. So I have now rolled out the antenna a little bit connected the device to 12 volt, attached everything, the antenna and the power. And now the big moment. Uh-huh. Ooh. I don't move. It does not warm. Oh! <laughs> not too, oh, not too bad. It even has different signals for the distance of the obstacle. Quite interesting. I frankly, I have to, oh, I have to switch it off. Frankly, I did not expect that this works. It uh, looks quite adventurous, but obviously at least it works a little bit. Now you can imagine you could, for example, stick this to your door and uh, instead of this beeper, you could probably use the light switch or something. 
So that could be something quite interesting. But of course, I am interested what's inside here. Quite a few things. I do not think that this is radar. There is a coil here, but uh, this does not have. It's not a high frequency coil. It's a, maybe viewers know more about this device here. Would be interesting uh, how which principle it uses. I cannot see it. So I checked the components. This is really a microcontroller. It is an AT eighty nine. C2051 and the endings here says it is a 8051 compatible Atmel um, microchip and here this small chip is a dual comparator so uh, basically nothing special a few transistors here a few transistors here and uh, a coil here probably a transformer and some electrolytic capacitors. So it's, I think it is a low frequency application, for sure no radar. But interesting, it seems to work somehow at least. I'm really interested if somebody knows which principle is used here to detect obstacles. By the way, it says 50 milliampere here. It only used 20 milliampere in my setup here, but still quite a lot for sure not a battery operated device. It needs mains power or a car battery. Next one. Also an interesting thing. Smaller than expected. Today it is a little bit a hacker mailbag. And this one here comes from dangerous prototypes and it is a bus pirate. Now um, what is a bus pirate? The bus pirate has a USB connection here, some circuitry and connections here and you can emulate a lot of serial connections with this bus pirate. So you can, for example, simulate a normal RS-232 or other, uh, other configurations like an I2C bus and stuff like that. I wanted to have one of these because sometimes I do some serial stuff and I thought it would be interesting to play around with this bus pirate. As frequent viewers know, I also have a logic analyzer which does a similar thing and maybe I will once compare it, also the software which is available with this uh, bus pirate, compared to the logic, these small logic analyzers. Um, which one? This is very dedicated for serial connection and the logic analyzer of course is much wider usable. By the way, this is version 3.6. If I remember right, you get also a version 4.0 which is more advanced but for most purposes, you do not need the, uh, the 4.0 and the 3.6 is, is quite cheap compared to the 4.0. Next one came from Amazon in Germany and it is a original Hack RF1. Frequent viewers remember that I already bought a Chinese Hack RF1 when I started to buy some software-defined radio stuff where I, when I did not understand too much when I just started with it and then one of my viewers asked why the hell I did not purchase the true Hack RF1 which was made by Great, Scott, Great Scott's Labs. This is not the YouTube Great Scott, this is somebody else and it's Mike Osman and Mike Osman did a great job in educating us and so on in SDR. I, I did not know this when I purchased the Chinese one and then when I saw the contributions of uh, Mike Osman 
I said I want to have an original one to support him personally. And uh, it, it was not easy in the recent times to get stuff from the United States because usually we had to pay at least double the, the amount uh, of money because of our customs and stuff like that. And now I found out that um, Amazon in Germany stocks these uh, hack RF1s so we can get it for a reasonable price with normal um, import duties and so on. So this is my original hack RF1 and I especially want to, to thank Michael Osman for his contribution to the community. And you find also links to his, to his videos. They are not easy, they are not short, but if you are really interested in this uh, SDR stuff, it's a must to go through these videos. Next one. This came also from the United States. And this is also from a very interesting guy. Felix Ruzu. Um, I heard about him and his low power lab company in a podcast and I thought he does a great job and uh, this is why I bought these chips here or these devices here. They are called Moteino and they are basically a combination between a Arduino like chip and on the, and on the flip side you can mount RF devices like the RFM95 LoRa module or the RFM69868 or 433 module. So you have a very, very small sensor module and it's really low power. Not, not as much as uh, the, the, the one from Kevin probably, but still very, very low power. And one example for an application is this one here. It is called motion mode and it is stuff for a weekend project or so. Nice PCB and a housing and I ordered it without this because I had a few laying around. And we will also see that we have to change the setup here a little bit. I learned it also from Felix, he found it out or maybe he is just a transmitter of the good news. But then we can really get a very low power PIR sensor which can transfer the signals over uh, quite a long distance because here we can mount a Moteino uh, board which ha has here a 433 or 868 module. And you find also libraries and stuff on his homepage. So he did a real good contribution. Everything is open source. So I wanted to support him too because he does a good job. Next one is my first package from India, from Armtronics. This one is a gift, all the others were purchased by me. So also the Indians can do a decent packaging job. I have to admit. A screw. PCB. Looks like a Sonoff. Another PCB. Relays and an ESP8266. And the relay and the USB connector and the switch here. So let's check what this is. So we are now on the homepage of Artronics.India e and we have the products here. And we see some of the products I have here. The first one is a power supply board, three, three or five watt. And this one here is a Raspberry Pi power supply board. Uh, we can buy it from Tindy. Maybe we find more information on Tindy. Documentation. Ah, uh, now we are on GitHub. It looks like that and it can be mounted on the Raspberry Pi. 
and you still have space for another extension here because the pins are still available on the top. Here we have four inputs with opto isolators and here we have four outputs with opto isolators and we, here we have a power supply for 24 volts. So this is for the industrial environment or for a maker who wants to have an optical isolation to protect uh, the, his Raspberry Pi or want to have higher voltages than only the 3.3 volt of the Raspberry Pi. I, and I assume that you have here also a little bit more current because there are some output transistors here. Another product is this small device. It looks very much like a Sonoff. But inside it looks completely different. It has an ESP8266 and a ready-made power supply, just biggie packed. And here we have a triac and two opto isolators. One is an MOC3021. This is an opto triac with a zero crossing detection and this is different to the Sonoff because with this one you can dim your lamps, at least if the lamps are dimmable. This is a quite a unique device. I like it because I never saw so far a small device like that, which has the possibility of dimming the lamps. These were my first two products from India. So we will see how this develops over time, whether we will get more and more products also from India. In videos like that, you understand why I have to thank all my supporters on Patreon, as well as viewers using my links for their purchases for supporting the channel. Without you, it would be difficult for me to do what I do now. Bye.